VS Code is neither free nor open source. I'll explain. If you go to their website, the first thing it says is VS Code free, built on open source. That's true, but it's also true to say it's neither free nor open source. So free, you probably know has two meanings, right? There's free as in free, no cost, free as in freedom. So they're talking about free, no cost. When I'm talking about free, I mean the freedom aspect. And when they say built on open source, that's true because it's built on top of an open source part, but VS Code itself, the Microsoft version, is not licensed with a free license. Uh, and you may even notice too, when you sign up, or right, right under the download button, it says, by using this, you agree to our license and our privacy statement. And if you go read the privacy statement, it talks about how they may collect personal data and how telemetry is turned on by default. So there's, a, there's, there's this extra baggage that comes with VS Code. And the, the open source part is called Code OSS. If you go find the GitHub repo, it's Code-OSS. And that's the free version. You can build it yourself from source. You know, it's not too difficult to do that actually, but it's lacking the branding aspect, which is no big deal. But also it doesn't come with any of the, the extensions. The entire extension library is not there. Now you can go in the settings and actually add Microsoft's repo for the extensions, but that violates the license. Um, you're not allowed to use their repo unless you're using VS Code, their version. Though technically it'll let you, it's not like they're blocking you or anything, but you're not supposed to. Uh, so the open source version is, is a little less featured. I think some of the, the smart IntelliSense coding stuff is also not there. There may be a couple other features. So there's a layer that Microsoft adds on top of the, the free version. Um, and it's not bad. I think VS Code's a great product, but I think you should be informed about your usage of it. You know, uh, know that telemetry is turned on and that you can turn it off if you want to. Know that there are proprietary things in it and there's a license and a privacy statement that goes along with it and all that. Um, and make your decision. It's not a judgment on it, but I think there's a place for both free software and proprietary software. I think a lot of the proprietary software is important because when you pay for it, you're funding further research and development potentially. Um, and usually the free stuff is kind of mimicking what's already out there. So they're a couple steps behind and they're not breaking huge ground all, I mean, not ever, but um, for example, Blender. Blender is uh, doing some really cool things, but I don't know exactly how that compares to some of the paid software. GIMP is not quite as good as Photoshop, but anyway, that's a, that's a different topic. Um, so yeah, regarding the extensions, right, I was saying you can't use the extensions in the open source version, but people have already created a third party repository I don't remember the name off the top of my head. You can find it, it's, um, but you put in that URL for their extensions and it's nothing but free extensions. So you don't get Microsoft's Python plugin, you get a different one. So stuff's not gonna be as good if you use it that way. Uh, but I just thought that was interesting. It's. Um, you know, not to say what Microsoft is doing is bad or anything. In fact, I think it's great that they even have the, the OSS version, but I'm not sure if that's a legacy of Atom because Microsoft bought GitHub and GitHub had built 
or did or is building the Atom editor. And I'm pretty sure Atom and Electron were GitHub things. And so that might have been the reason why they, they had to keep it as that license because Atom was released under it and that was the foundation for VS Code. I'm not exactly sure if there's a lineage between Atom and VS Code directly, but yeah, just something to think about. Um, Chrome is the same way, right? There is a piece of Chrome underneath, Chromium, a large part of it, you know, a big chunk of it, but Chrome, Google Chrome, has Google branding, Google trademarks, and Google code, Google integrations and stuff built on top of it that you don't have access to the source code for. So there's a huge difference between Chromium and Chrome. And there's a big difference between code, OSS, and VS code. So what do you guys think? Um, I still use VS code. It doesn't deter me from using it, but um, on some of my machines, I actually built code OSS from source. Um, it works good. It works for my needs. I don't use it as a primary IDE. I use it more for note taking and quick, quick edits and things. Uh, I use PyCharm mostly and IntelliJ or NetBeans if I have a big project going on, something like that. I don't, I don't use Vim as an IDE. I use it for quick edits, but these people who use Vim as a full-fledged IDE, I, I still think they're crazy. Um, I've seen all the plugins. I've, I've had that conversation where oh, you can turn it into an IDE if you install these 45 plugins and spend all this time customizing it, but oh no, actually, yeah, okay, so you couldn't do that. You can't do that when I'm saying, okay, well, I can do this. I can do control F9 click and do that. And they're like, oh, well, you know, you can't, quite do it that easily you got to do this instead which is just as good but it's not uh, my opinion um, the JetBrains IDEs are awesome and they're worth the money if you're a professional developer but uh, that's another discussion anyway what do you guys think about the code OSS versus VS code did you know that there was the free version that you could go download that's different let me know over and out